Hey there, Chad here with my very first Kerbal Space Program tutorial. In this particular episode, we are going to launch our first rocket. We're going to do this while playing the career mode, so there is a little bit of run up before we actually push that launch button. I'm going to create a new game and I'm going to select career mode and we're going to call this career walkthrough. I can select a flag out of those that are available and you can download flags as well. I'm going to go ahead and pick the NASA flag because why not? Uh, difficulty options, I'm going to leave those at normal. There are some other options you can do and you can customize your game if you'd like. For our purposes, normal is probably where we want to start. When you first start a game in Kerbal Space Program, you get a little, I don't know if you want to call it a tutorial, more like tips on how to play. I'll let you read through those at your own pace. We're going to go ahead and just say thanks on these when they pop up for now. This is Kerbal Space Center. This is where you launch your rockets and your planes and, and well, this is where everything happens in the game. There are several buildings here and we won't go into too much detail, but I do want to at least point them out. First, we have the landing strip or the runway. This is where airplanes and uh, atmosphere-based items can be, can be done, those that generate lift through wings. We have a launch pad for our rockets. This is mission control. I do want to go into mission control. Before we do that, I, I want to point out most of these are upgradable. Mission control costs 75,000 to upgrade. As you can see, we only have 25,000. So we're not going to do that just yet. As you upgrade, the buildings give you more abilities of what you can do. Right now, I have a maximum of two contracts I can select, and we are going to talk about contracts right now. We will click here on mission control and we'll go into mission control. Contracts. Contracts are kind of important when you're playing career mode. They actually are disabled in the other modes. In fact, mission control doesn't even open up for you in science mode or uh, sandbox. In career mode, this is how we gain mm -hmm. money and reputation and to some extent science. So the stars here are reputation. And right now we're at a neutral reputation, neither positive nor negative. We would like our reputation to go up. That allows us to accept better contracts in the future. Of course, we want our money to go up because we have to pay for things. And this is our science. Science is what is used to advance your tech tree. We will cover that in a lot of detail over the next episode or two of this tutorial. I'm not going to go into really deep explanations of these right now. We will talk about them as we go. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to select launch our first vessel and I'm going to accept that one and I'm going to accept gather scientific data from Kerbin and we are going to and he's happy we took that we are going to demonstrate that relatively quickly here I'm going to touch the rest of the buildings real quick this is the space plane hangar this is where you build planes this is the a astronaut complex. When we go in here, we can select new Kerbals. We start with four Kerbals, two pilots, an uh, engineer, and a scientist. We will use the pilots immediately, and you will uh, see those go through. Here's the flagpole. The flagpole shows us the current flag, and it allows us to change our flag if we choose. This is the administration building. We won't go into a whole lot of depth on that. Right now, I'm gonna leave everything in the middle. And we have the tracking station. This allows us to keep track of everything that's in space. We'll go ahead and open this real quick. Right now, there's nothing in space. It allows us to look at Kerbin or any other body we choose. We can look at these. We have the, the research and development. This is where you manage your tech tree. As you can see right now, I have no science points to spend. And in order to advance to basic, rock, basic rocketry, I need five science points. To get to Engineering 101, I need five. This is all I have to start. We will work on this in the future. We're going to skip it for now. And then I think last but not least is the Vehicle Assembly Building. Uh, Werner von Kerman is the chief engineer here, and this is probably the only time we see him. So 
We're going to say goodbye to Burner, and we're going to go ahead and start to look at what we want to do. Now, we can look at our contracts again. As you recall, one was to gather scientific data from Kerbin, and one was to launch our first vessel. Well, we're going to definitely launch the first vessel right now. The scientific data, we're going to... I'm not going to intentionally fulfill this, but I think we can fulfill it by doing a crew report. I'll show you how that's done when we actually are sitting on the launch pad. Okay, we'll cl you typically you close these windows by clicking the icon a second time. So in order to fly a rocket or really anything in Kerbal, you have to have something that can command it. Initially, the only thing we have to command something is a command pod. It's a little mercury type pod if you're a fan of the uh, US space program. And that's what it looks like. You can zoom in and out with your mouse holding shift, left shift. Uh, that allows you in and out. Otherwise, your scroll uh, moves you up and down. You rotate by right clicking. And there's a few other more advanced commands. We'll come to those as time permits. So let's go ahead and get this started though. Right now there's not a whole lot for us to pick from. If we look through this entire list, there's only a handful of things. One is the capsule. We have no fuel tanks available to us. In fact, the only engine we have available to us is called the FLEA, and it is a solid rocket booster. Solid rockets do not use fuel, right? Because it's the fuel is built into it. It's literally solid. You click once and then you can mouse around. I'm not holding the mouse button. That was just a click. And then, of course, you see the little um, the little colored spheres there. That shows where attach points are. You you can flip something around with your keyboard using A, S, D, W, Q, and E, and uh, you just need to experiment with that a little bit. A lot of times, items will snap into place on their own. There's ways to control that, and we'll talk about that a little later. So when I'm ready to put that where I want it, I click it, turn solid, and there I now have a capsule with an engine. What I don't have is a way to retrieve it just yet. If I were to launch this, it would launch just fine. We do have an astronaut in there. In this case, it's Jebediah. Jebediah Kerman is sitting in there. Jebediah will not survive the impact if we were to launch this rocket and just let it go. What we need to do is add a parachute. Parachutes are under utility. The Mark 16 parachute is the only one you have at the beginning, and we're gonna drop it right there. Kerbal Engineer Redux is a mod, and I do talk about that in my video on the mods that I'm using. So right now what we have is a rocket that is a single stage rocket. It has one engine. We have a capsule and we have a parachute. If you look over here in lower right, this is your rocket stack. This is the stages of your rocket. Now the stages are numbered in reverse order. So if we we, and we don't have the ability right now, but if we had the ability to create multiple stages, the, the higher the number stage, the earlier it is used in the mission. So you actually count down in your stages. Right now, stage one is the rocket itself, the engine. And stage two is deployment of the parachute. We could do both of those at once by dragging that and putting it in the same stage. That would be a mistake, because what would happen is the rocket would launch and the parachute would deploy and the rocket would spin out of control. We just don't want that. So you typically want to put your stages, your, your items separately. Let's go ahead and let's launch this, this guy. Let's light the candle here. So we're gonna go to the launch pad by clicking launch. The launch pad is very basic to begin with. You'll notice it's literally just a hunk of concrete couple of things to know here. Now this is a solid rocket engine. Once you turn it on, it is on. There's nothing else you can do about it. No turning it off. If it were a fueled rocket, those all have throttles and the throttles uh, start at zero. You'll notice down here, my throttle points all the way to zero. This has nothing to do with the solid rocket booster. It, it, it will make no difference. But just to be in a habit, what I always do is I always put that to full by hitting Z. Z is what uh, puts it to full, X puts it to minimum, left shift and left control, move it up and down. Depending on the rocket you're launching, sometimes you don't want it at full, full throttle right away. Um, but just to be in a decent habit, that's what I always do. When you have a command capsule with a pilot in it, you have the ability to toggle the stability assist system. And since Jeb is in our rocket, 
we can do that. Jeb is a very talented pilot, although in my game right now, he has no stars. He has no experience. So here's something to know. In the latest main release of Kerbal, there is a bug. Jeb has all of these turned on. There's 10 different supports for SAS. They all do different things. They're all available right now, although some of them aren't available just because of the situation. But they're all available. The only one that should be available when he's level one or level zero is stability assist, the first one, which is the one that's highlighted right now. I shouldn't be able to select any of these, but I can. So that's a bug that's gonna need to be fixed. I'm gonna do my best to maintain the, the appropriate um, balance of the level he's at with what I use over here. What the stability assist does is he basically tries to keep the rocket's attitude constant while it's flying. Now you can manipulate it and as you manipulate it, he'll correct to what you're trying to do. Pretty straightforward there. I'm currently facing north from the launch pad. The flag is north. Your rocket is always kind of lined up north, south, east, west. So how do we launch? Well, it's really simple. You hit the space bar and that advances you to the next stage. So we are staged right now. We're ready to execute stage one, and as soon as I press space, that's going to light the, the solid rocket booster, and it will take off. One final thing we're going to do before we launch is we're going to run our first science experiment. To do that, we're going to right-click on the capsule, and we're going to come down to the very bottom here. Uh, I'm going to turn on the cabin light because uh, I like it on. It has nothing to do with running the experiment. We're going to click on crew report. This is Jeb's report that he is going to bring back based on his current situation. Right now his situation is he's in the biome launch pad, so he's sitting on the launch pad, and he's going to record that information and bring it back at the end. It's only worth one and a half science points, but these add up. And particularly early on, we don't need a whole lot of science to move along. To keep the experiment, we click the clipboard you can also transmit the data if you have an active antenna and you have enough power. I don't have either of those right now, so we're going to just keep the experiment. So when he lands, he will turn that information in and that'll turn into science points for us. And now we will launch. I'm gonna hit the space bar. You'll notice over here, it will show fuel immediately and the fuel burns very quickly. This is a very small booster. I'm also going to kind of yaw over using by default the D key so that we splash down in the water. And the rocket will cut off right about now, and now we're just riding the momentum from the launch. This shows us our altitude in meters over sea level. We can also do ground level. By now we're probably over the water though, so it won't make a difference. These are added on from uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux, and we'll talk about setting that up a little more, but it gives you some really interesting information. The apoapsis, that is the highest point or the furthest point of from uh, a, during your flight path from what you are orbiting. In this case, that would be the planet Kerbin. We're basically going to reach a maximum altitude of, right now it says 18,000 meters. You notice it's dwindling and that is because the friction, although it looks like it's actually started to climb again, friction with the atmosphere will start to bring that down, you'll notice we're starting to approach it it's calculating it a little more accurately and we just crossed over to where we're falling back to the planet so we maxed out a little above 18,000 almost 18,500 meters i'm going to try to position the craft so that it's kind of riding its retrograde down so this icon here the circle it has a small x in it you can also notice it here that's the retrograde path Effectively, that's where the rocket is moving exactly in reverse from its orientation. No great reason to do that, but when you're coming in fast, that's how you use your heat shield. All right, we're going to go ahead and deploy the parachute. So we're going to move to the next stage. And to do that, we're just going to press space. That's all it takes. I'm actually going to let it slow down just a little more, maybe get closer to 7,000 feet. That should do it. Uh, 7,000 meters, pardon me. Now you'll notice the parachute didn't bloom right away. And that's, that's intentional. It's actually going to bloom at about 1,000 meters. We can adjust that in settings. Uh, decided not to do that just yet. We can dial that kind of stuff in a little later. We're still falling at 200 meters a second, so quite fast when the 
parachute finally fully blooms, you'll notice we're going to drop to about six. A little over six there, seven. And I'm going to turn off SAS. You'll notice the rocket now just kind of falls into its gravitational pull. Probably wondering what allows that to happen since there's no jets or anything on this capsule. Uh, gyroscopes. There were there were controlled based gyroscopes that would spin very quickly and gave a little bit of support and control to the navigation of the. the... All right, we're going to return. And we're going to recover the vessel. That will shoot us back to the Space Center and we'll have a little summary report of what all happened here. So we gathered about six and a half points of science, which puts us up to 19. We'll spend those in the next episode. We recovered a little bit of money from the uh, rocket for our returning the parts back. We don't get 100% collection and it is based on how far away you land from the Space Center. So we got a pretty high return value. Uh, you'll notice our fundage went way up. That is because of all the milestones we reached. There we go. So we received some money for breaking speed records, and we actually broke several of them. Altitude records, distance traveled records. So that's pretty cool. The other one, gathering scientific data from Kerbin. So because we were touching Kerbin when we ran that, it completed that that science experiment for us and we were paid off. So that was our second contract that we had. And that is your first flight. We will come back and pick up from here. We'll start with a science tech tree and we'll see what we can add on to our rockets moving forward. Until then, fair travels.